Hello, my name is Janet Anstey from CSIRO Oceans and Atmosphere, and I'm here today to talk about the Eye on Water Australia project. First, I want to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands and waters in which we take our observations and pay respect to their elders past and present, and thank them for their custodianship of the lands and water. I also want to acknowledge my co-authors and collaborators that are listed on this slide. The inspiration for the Eye on Water project came after a visit from one of our collaborators, Hans van der Woort, as a visiting scientist to CSIRO. He inspired the idea from his involvement in the European Cyclops project that ran between 2012 and 2015. The components that he described about the project, like the low cost tools, open access of the data archives and storage and providing different tools for different user groups really sparked an interest in us in, in terms of looking at the compatibility to in situ and remote sensing data. The tools tested in the Cyclops project range from high to low effort by the participants. With most of the effort going into the lower project, um, uh, developing a 3D printing housing to fit to a, a smartphone to measure water uh, fluorescence. To the least effort, which was the Eye on Water Colour app, where participants were required to take a photo, compare it to the Pharrell Yule colour chart, um, and then send the data to the database. And this this activity had a high uptake from, from uh, participants. So when the Australian government's Inspiring Australia uh, uh, proposals were, um, uh, grants were announced, we wrote a proposal and were successful for the Iron Water project, which commenced in 2017. We included our project partners, Maris, the original app developers, as well as Han van der Wort, so that we could leverage the learnings and outcomes of the previous uh, Cyclops project run in uh, Europe. The original funding was finished in 2020, but we also included the Eye on Water uh, project as part of uh, our collaborative inland water quality project with Geoscience Australia, which commenced in 2019 and will run through to 2022. Our interest in citizen science as aquatic remote sensing team really stemmed from our, our lack of available uh, validation data in inland and coastal waters. But we also wanted to test and assess the potential for using citizen science data in order to uh, calibrate and validate our satellite images. So our objectives really reflected those interests. The natural colour of water can, can vary from yellow tannin rich waters or sediment laden brown or caramel waters to green and, and blue-green colours of algal blooms. You also get the aqua and navy blue marine waters. The colour of water tells us things about what's going on in the water column, like whether it's suitable for drinking or swimming, or whether the what the water depth is, or where the phytoplankton-rich waters are for fishing. The colour of water is our impression of the spectral composition of the reflected sunlight. It tells us about the substances and processes in the water column, which alter the sunlight before it leaves the water after being backscattered and finally reaching our sensor, the eye. Mapped by satellites from space, the colour of water can be used to map and monitor the water quality of various water bodies and give us information on chlorophyll concentrations or turbidity or even seasonal patterns. In recent times, water quality issues such as algal blooms in our lakes and rivers have impacted the ecosystems 
and in some cases led to fish kills. And the photos on the left here show algal blooms in the Darling River region from 2018-2019 summer. The recent bushfires which devastated last large regions in Australia in the 2019-2020 time left ash and debris that was transported in, in rivers and after the rains. In both the algal bloom and bushfire situations, knowing where the water quality problems are are increasingly important and they can be measured by both ground-based measurements like the Eye on Water app and satellite imagery to give a wider scale view of the situation. Polar orbiting satellites provide coverage over the whole Earth. For the Sentinel-2 satellite, which we use in inland waters, the spatial resolution is suitable and it, we get coverage around every five days with the twin satellites if the conditions are not cloudy. This means that ion water observations have the potential to fill in the gaps between the satellite observations. The Earth Observation Framework we've developed with our project partners, Geoscience Australia, was developed to create operational national water quality products from satellites. The interoperability of tools and methods using open source data allows the inclusion of both satellite data, non-traditional types of observational data, and non-traditional types of data like citizen science. The Iron Water project can form part of this uh, uh, framework. The app uses the Pharrell Yule color scale, which was developed in the late 19th century, and the scale is composed of 21 colors going from indigo blue to cola brown through the blue green region, green and yellow colors. It was developed, um, it was recently described by Wernand and, and Vanderwart and in another paper by Bush demonstrating the applicability to satellite derived products. For, participa for participants, that are, um, we ask them to take a colour photo of the water surface and select the colour closest um, to the photo using the Pharrell Yule colour scale and then upload it to the database where the observations can then be seen on our website. For participants that are really keen, we can provide additional bits of equipment like Secchi discs, probes to measure temperature, pH, dissolved oxygen or conductivity. And most of these measurements can then be added directly to the app via the interface. And the data can be stored with the photo um, and on the database and website. This is another area for further research for us for us to determine which instruments are the most robust, accurate and useful and provide us for the opportunity for expanding the range of, different, of additional observations. During the project, we developed a website um, to better visualise the observations and also to develop metrics to better interpret the data. Pie charts are, are one such metric this pie chart here is shown for the broom jetty. It shows a range of colours ranging from 4 to 12, with 5 being the most frequent. This pie chart gives us information about the normal conditions that we would expect in this region and also some of the ranges of um, non-normal conditions. To see how the observations vary over time, we created temporal plots that show the variability of the water through time. In this plot in the lower right hand side, you can see the Pharrell Yule changing from month to month um, after each observation. The lower values like 11 and 12 indicate high algae in the lake. These are currently being tested in our development site website and we hope to have other metrics that are useful in visualising water quality.
When we process satellite data into watercolour indices, we can produce a range of different products, like the spatial extent map shown on the far left of the screen. We can also produce uh, counts, a number of satellite images that were taken each month, like the plot on the top right. And you can see we have lots more images acquired during the summer months than in the middle of the year when we have cloudy conditions. On the lower right, you can see the temporal plot for each pixel in the lake occurring for each um, year. And on the very far right, you can see the frequency distribution of these occurrences in regards to their Pharrell Yule indice. And you can see the most common Pharrell um, index is, is around 16 in the lake, although there's a second peak lower down, which indicates um, around 11 or 12, where algae occurs in the lake, usually during the summer or, or spring, um, sorry, autumn periods of time. We can then take a direct comparison with the temporal plots for the water body use and then compare the satellite directly with the eye on water citizen science observation. And in, in this example, we've got two measurements that were taken at two points of time in two different locations. And we can uh, compare that directly with the satellite derived for our Yule index measurement. We know from the previous work in Cyclops and the work Hans has undertaken that improved quality of observations come from high quality user guides and tutorials. So we've produced a range of different material for our user groups and made them available on our website and through YouTube video, such as this one here. Our future work will involve further research into which other biophysical measurements are most useful to include with the project. To increase the number of observations we have 
to match up with the satellite overpasses, to increase the number of um, the usage of our website, improve the metrics and visualisations, and to have the citizen science data visualised concurrently with the satellite imagery. Most of all, we want to stay engaged with our participants and provide relevant feedback to them and keep the project fun and relevant to the conditions that we see on the ground. Thanks for your attention today.